Joining me now here on the MMA Report is the man, the head coach of the MMA Lab. Of course, uh, last week on the show we had Henry, Cor- or, uh, we had Henry Kraus and Eddie Cha. Now we got John Crouch on the show. On the show, John, man, I, I appreciate the time. I know it's a busy week for you with all all the fires you got uh, in terms of uh, the UFC card this week, and so I really appreciate, it, man. How's things been? Good, really good. Thanks for having me on. It's it's not too bad. It doesn't really start till tomorrow. And, uh, you know, everything's kind of, kind of, everybody's got their little system. So we're good to go. Uh, first off, you know, I mentioned I had Henry uh, and Eddie both on the show last week. Uh, obviously, you've seen the growth of Henry Corrales since coming uh, to your gym. What, what, what has really stuck out to you about the growth of him as a martial artist? Uh, the fact that he was willing to put in the work and change some things. Uh, and make a difference, you know. The you really got to attribute it to Henry, and credit all his hard work to. That's really, that's really what you got to pay attention to is that he was willing to change some things and take a risk and and make it better. So uh, that's what really stands out to me is what a what a cool, brave human he is. Yeah, I thought one of the most interesting thing that that Eddie was telling me, and I, and I knew how much Henry does read books. He's like, yeah, but he doesn't have a TV in his house, which is kind of kind of amazing to for for a lot of people. And of course, you know, Eddie is a guy that you brought in. I remember Eddie had told me a story a, a long time ago where you know he was uh, working with Francisco Rivera. You saw him, and then ultimately you decided that hey, I want to bring this guy to my gym. Was there something about Eddie you saw that you said, hey, man, he'd be a great addition to to the team? Well, you know, we're uh, adjacent houses. Uh, manager and uh, he works with a bunch of our guys and and he had worked with Eddie before and we were looking for someone and and he recommended Eddie and we watched some films and then Eddie started coming out on the weekends for I don't know five or six weekends in a row driving from California and we hit it off and you know obviously he's super talented and super knowledgeable uh, and it went great and now here we are he's he's a good guy and you couldn't you couldn't ask for a more knowledgeable person to be in charge of that striking program. He really knows his stuff. Uh, before we kind of get into uh, you know the fires you got coming up this weekend, I, I was I was wondering how would you describe your coaching philosophy? Uh, I don't know what that that means really. Um, you know, I try to put people in the best spot they have to succeed. You know, it's about being consistent. It's about showing up every day and doing the work and you know, not getting too down and not getting too up and just keep going through. So I would say more than anything, it's just about consistency of effort. I mean, how much of your job is just trying to, to, to figure out the the mindset of your fires and knowing what's going to motivate them and what's not going to motivate them? Well, you know, there's, there's only so much you can do with that. Like they are who they are, you know? And so, as we go and we figure out, you know, these things work. And so we're going to do this more and this didn't work. So we're going to do that less. Really. I'm just, I feel like I'm just a plumber, you know, I put the water where it's supposed to go and they're the ones that make the artwork out of it. So, um, you know, I just try to get them in places where they're comfortable to do their best work. Yeah. You know, one of the things that I, I tend to kind of pay attention to is, is the betting odds on a fight. And earlier this week, when I saw that Alex Cesarius was a three to one underdog, I was shocked. Point out shocked. I don't know if that's the first time you've heard it, but is, is there any kind of thoughts that go through your mind? No, I don't care. I mean, it's just people's opinions. You know, I, I think people love the idea of, of Kron Gracie coming in and just doing his thing and, kind of old school style and, and that's fine. You know, the guys are going to fight and those odds don't matter at all. And really they're just other people's opinions. So I, I don't ever, I don't ever really know. Like people tell me stuff that kind of shocks me because I don't really pay attention to it. You know, I know there's certain things we have to do to be successful, certain things we can't allow him to do. Um, and, but that's about it. You've been around Alex for a long time. Um, yeah, I think this is fight number. I'm sorry to interrupt. This is fight number 14 for us. I think. I mean, what 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 is the difference between Alex at fight 14 as opposed to fight one with you? Well, um, you know, a lot of maturity. He's worked. Uh, he's worked a lot on his ground game. You know, he moved out to Phoenix to do kind of the same thing that Henry Corrales did. And uh, and I would say he's more mature and he's he's more creative than ever. And uh, 
and he's better at the things that he wasn't as so good at when we started. One of the things that I, I didn't know about you until uh, you were on the, the Valor Hour, Tim Loya, a couple months ago, is your Tennessee roots, and of course that's Scott Holtzman. Uh, you know, with his Tennessee roots, he, he's got Nick Lentz coming up on, on Sunday. I mean, what, what's uh, what's been going on with with Hot Sauce in terms of getting ready for this fight? Oh, he's had a great camp. I don't I don't remember Hot Sauce having a bad camp ever. He's a that guy's a consummate professional, and uh, I don't know. He, he, there won't be any stones unturned in Scott Holtzman's past. You know, when he looks back on his career, he's going to know that he did everything he could to be great, uh, however it turns out. So uh, he's had a great camp, and I'm super excited about this matchup. In terms of, of Nick Lentz, I mean, obviously he's he's been around a long time. I mean, is it is it one of those things where – is it kind of easy to prepare for a guy like him just because you've got so much footage and you know what – there's not going to be a ton of tricks that he's going to throw out there that you haven't seen? Well, yes and no. I mean, if somebody does the same thing over and over again and they keep catching everybody in it, they must be pretty dang good at it. So, you know, people are like, oh, you know what Nick Lentz is going to do. But yeah, but he does it successfully against everybody. So um, then the issue becomes – how are we going to be different than the, the people that he, he used it against? So, yeah, there's plenty of film on Nick, but he's a he is a professional. He shows up every time to fight and does a good job. So, um, you know, you can't discount people because they've been around a long time. Uh, another fight you got on this car, Brian Barbarena. It seems to be that I think it's more times than not. I feel like people just kind of keep counting him out and, Taking on Vicente Luque, who's been on an absolute uh, roll here, um, you know, why do you think people tend to to doubt Brian in fights? Well, that's a great question. You know, I think he doesn't come off as maybe the most technical guy. Uh, maybe it's just the matchup he gets. Uh, but he's another hard worker, and he's a tough cat, man. He, he's, uh, I mean, he's going to be in there fighting. You know, he, there's going to be no time in any fight of Brian's that you'll see him give up or, you know, maybe let off and not try. Like He's going to be in there. So I think you always got to give him a good chance to be in there because he's going to scrap till the bell rings. Uh, and, of course, uh, another fire, you got Courtney Casey. She, she's in a big fight uh, against Cynthia Calvijo. Um, what, what do you believe is the key for Courtney to get the win? I think uh, – Cynthia really just overwhelms people with energy in my mind. I think she's good, but I think she's just usually more energetic, more aggressive. So we need to match that energy. I think Courtney's better technically in all areas. And, um, but you know, that doesn't mean too much when you get into a fight. So we have to match her energy, you know, not be overwhelmed by just sheer aggression, be able to respond to that. And then it should be, you know, it should be a good fight for us. Uh, I'll be up in, in Connecticut for the Bellator events, and uh, Michael Page and and Paul Daly. It's just a, a fascinating matchup. I mean, I think we all understand it's going to be on the feet from a coaching perspective. I don't know how much you sat there and watched Michael Page, but is is there any? Do you, has there been anybody else you've seen that's anything like him? Well, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of athletes. I mean, he's had some great matchups. I, I like him. I think he's a talented kid, but. He's still pretty young in his sport, you know. Um, and the last guy he fought that he won a decision over showed some of those holes and how young he is. I think Israel Adesanya is a great athlete. He does great, amazing things in the ring. I think, you know, I mean, Sugar Sean in our camp, he's a great athlete. He does amazing things. I think it just depends on um, – I like him, but Paul Daly is, is a stern test. If Paul Daly puts one on your chin, it could be the last one you're going to see. In terms of uh, your gym, uh, fighters outside of, of the UFC and Bellator, is is there some fighters you got that got fights come up here in the next couple of weeks that, that people should be paying attention to? Well, you know, we just had the LFA. I don't know if you mm-hmm. saw that, but we had three three guys on the on the TV card for LFA, and they all won first round stoppages. So it was a good night for us. And then, you know, some of our amateurs are coming up, and we have seven people on the same card here next month, and then uh, three on the Combates card in Tucson at the end of next month. So staying busy, you know, um, Dan Dan Moret is going to fight on UFC Wichita March 9th, 
And then uh, Bobby Moffitt and Chris Gritzmacher are both going to be on USC Nashville uh, March 23rd. So it's going to be a busy month. We, you know, we always have something coming up. We always have something to work towards. And that's the good news. You know, we always have some sense of purpose where we're going. Coach, I, I really appreciate you coming on the show this week. Uh, let everyone know they can follow uh, your gym on social media. Yeah, everything for our, our gym is at the MMA Lab. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, you know, um, Twitter. And uh, we'd love to have you guys come check it out and follow us and support MMA in general. That'd be great. Coach, I appreciate time and uh, good luck for all your guys this weekend. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. Have a good day.